everybody. Hello. That, that's, that's actually very true. I've only been a, a full-time comedian for two years. Uh, prior to that, I was a sales and marketing director in a pharmaceutical company. Now, I'll allow that to sink in for a minute. I was a sales and marketing director in an international pharmaceutical company, and that's not something that many of the lads who grew up on my estate ended up doing. <laughs> uh, to be fair, a lot of them were in related industries, <laughs> but they didn't seem to get a company car, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> as you know as well, Liverpool, Liverpool this year is the European capital of culture. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, it's been brilliant. It's been brilliant for the city, and, and particularly for me, I mean, I've seen a lot of changes, although the most significant thing about Liverpool being the European capital of culture, I found was when I stayed at my mum and dad's the other week, I stayed there and I came down for breakfast in the morning. And instead of me dad having a normal breakfast, when I walked downstairs, he was sat there at the breakfast table and on his plate, he had a croissant. <laughs> and now, my dad's not a person who's ever seen a croissant before. <laughs> He's of that generation. You know that generation of dads who think a trip to the tip is a day out? <laughs> you think the tip is a bring and buy sale? <laughs> I'm not kidding you. My dad's one of those people who go to the tip and come back with more than he went with. <laughs> if, if, see, three years ago, he went to the tip, he saw an oak front door in a skip. He thought, that's too good to throw away. <laughs> he climbed in, took it out, took it home and built a shed around it. <laughs> My mum's the only person in Britain who's got a shed with a brass door knocker on the front door. <laughs> so he sat there, he's eating his croissant, and I looked at him, and I know he's never seen a croissant before. I said, Dad, uh, uh, how's it going? How's your croissant? He said, this. He said, the rubbish. Croissants are rubbish. He said, they're just empty pasties. <laughs> but obviously, as I was saying, I'm, I'm proud of being from Liverpool, although, although to be honest, I, I, I've emigrated now, I live in Manchester, and, uh, <laughs> and there's a reason for that. It's because it's I married a girl from Manchester. We've been married now for, for 15 years, on and off. <laughs> and that's created its own problems, because I'm from Liverpool, she's from Manchester, so our kids are mixed race. <laughs> no, and that's a huge problem for them, because they're not Manx, they're not Scousers, they're more, they're more Mousers, to be honest with you. <laughs> And you realise what a big problem this is when, when, when you have a significant moment with your children. And, and I found it when I was taking my oldest son for his first football kit. And that's an important moment for any dad, to take your son for your first football kit. And he was only five, I said, I want to take him for his first kit. So, so I took him, took him to a sports shop. And we'd never had the conversation. You just assume as a parent you pass things on in your DNA. And I walked into the shop and there's a huge array of football kits. I said, yeah, son, which kit do you want? And he just looked at me, he was only five, I said, which kit do you want? And I basically meant home or away. That's what I meant, the red or the white. And he looked at me, he's only five, with eyes full of innocence. He said, Dad, can I have a Manchester United kit? <laughs> I know, I know, can you imagine what I felt like? Because there's cameras in them shops, isn't there? So I couldn't hit him. <laughs> no, but at that moment, I'd rather him turn around and say, to be honest with you, Dad, I don't like football, I'd rather be a girl and have a pony. <laughs> And I didn't want to force anything on him, cos it's wrong, isn't it, as a parent? So I said, let's go home and have a chat. And, it, and it's, it's amazing how hungry a five-year-old can get after a couple of days, isn't it? So... <laughs> he's a very keen Liverpool supporter now. <laughs> Obviously, things are changing in the world now with this credit crunch. Everyone's panicking. You go on holiday, you don't know if the airline's gonna be there when you come back or if they're gonna go bust. And everyone's wondering why they're going bust. I know why they're going bust. Cos they don't charge you to go anywhere. I went to Dublin. I went to Dublin three weeks ago from Liverpool for a pound. A pound! I flew from Liverpool to Dublin for a pound. I didn't even want to go, to be honest with you. <laughs> I was on my way to Blockbusters to get a DVD. I thought I might as well save a few quid. A pound! A pound! You wouldn't go for that kind of bargain in anything else in your life, would you? If somebody turned up your house and said, listen, I've got some meat in the car, do you want to buy it for a quid? You think, no, I'm not going to have that. It will make me sick. <laughs> if someone wants to sell you some aftershave for a pound, you think, no, I'm not going to have that. It will burn me skin. But if somebody says to you, do you fancy having a go at defying gravity at 30,000 feet? You think, yeah, I'll give it a pop for a pound. <laughs> And I'm up there, I paid the pound for the seat, I paid the pound for the seat, I asked for a cup of tea, £2.50! <laughs> if you charge more for a cup of tea than you do to transport people from one country to another, there's a chance you're gonna go bust! <laughs> and what was worse, 
we're flying through the air, and this had never happened to me before, we're flying through the air and the plane hit an air pocket. And as it was falling, it fell about 150 feet, and as it was falling, I thought, well, it's only a quid. <laughs> oh, you've got to expect to get your feet wet for a pound, haven't you? <laughs> now, normally, ladies and gentlemen, I like to finish me show and me underpants doing an handstand, but I think somebody's already done that tonight, so... Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to finish now, but thanks a lot for listening. I've been John Bishop. Good night and God bless. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.